everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States. And we are gonna be taking a look at Nike and Kenja's Air Sesh, a shoe design for dancers. This is the promotion that Kenja's made way back in the day when they originally released the Air Seshes. Um, I have not seen this, it's kinda of cool. I've been seeing it pop up on Instagram, so naturally I was like, let's take a look at it together. I know my hair looks really greasy. I did just get out of the shower, so that's why I, I it looks like this, so I apologize. Maybe I should have waited for it to dry, <laughs> but I couldn't wait. I thought I was just go ahead and vibe it out, so here we go. Regardless if they have a mascot or not, it's their movement quality for sure. Nice threading on that. So fun. The masking on this is so fun. So fun. Alternate universe, vibing it out right there. I don't think they had, um, who is it? Oh my gosh. Why can't my brain brain? Yeah, legit, was it logistics? Gosh, why can't my brain brain? She's a beat girl. She technically hasn't been announced as a member of the crew yet at this point, right? House vibing out. Hey. Mm. Yeah, we got Bailey Sock on the right side. Oh, that is cool. 
I will say though, this is low key appears like false advertising because look, it looks like it's light up. And for me, I would be like, where's my light up air sessions <laughs> for this part? Very nice. This is cool. cool oh and I love that they're finishing it up oh that's cool 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 stuff right there I mean all in all this is this is a whole vibe I really love the visual I think I only saw glimpses of that first half and then the second half was completely new to me so that was really cool bringing it back from the top I think most of it's pretty conceptual so we'll kind of just talk through it as what I recall so with Kinja's the only ones that I've actually like personally know have a conversation with and actually worked with is uh, Arnell Calvario and Charles Nguyen so those are the really the only two that I have any uh, first-hand real-life experience like just existing in the same space with and having conversations and that are a little bit more deep than a surface level um, I really do like how they chose to do this where they went through the different eras of the shoes and what they're notable for which is super fun and I love that the air stash at this time does not have a photo and we know that at the end they were the ones that made the air sashes um, now this is Mike Song right here, and we've seen him on the Street Woman Fighter and the Street Man Fighter series. Uh, so, and I have a feeling we're going to be seeing him for the Street Girl Fighter because, uh, he may have been part of the screening process, which I think is cool, just like Monica, because they showed a trailer for that. I like Ty, it's super dope. I think my one note on the marketing side is how they chose to do the glow-up shoes. Personally, I think that could have, uh... I think that would have been smarter to not do that uh, if they if I because I don't know if this got chosen I'm assuming it didn't get chosen because they're celebrating their two-year anniversary of the release of the shoe and I don't know if I said this but I did own a pair uh, I own the black version um, they just you know because you use them to dance my my soul on the back of it just started to come off because I've been using them so much so I, I had to retire my ear sessions but they were freaking great so let me see who's here I love it with the shoe accenting down, using it to kind of wave their body up, turning it around. I know they have vibrancy. They were the videographers on this because you have Chad, who is a part of uh, Kinja's, but also a part of vibrancy. And so it is cool to be able to have that type of utilization of artistry in your arsenal because that really helps in these cases, you know. So it appears right here, well, it looks like Charles and then... Uh, my third guy. My, it's also a guessing game too, that's what makes it fun. Bring it over. Okay, so we have Anthony on this side. It looks like. You have Bam in the middle. Ben Chung, possibly. I know there's a certain part that I could really tell who they were, but they're just far away. It's hard to tell. But I really like their use of the chairs, dropping it down to create an extra level. They also get to show off their merch too, which is cool. I think it's either, it's Villain, I think it's Villain, Lore, because Villain Impact, right? And they're both breakers. I think that's Villain. I've taken Villain's class, so that's what I'm, I'm gonna assume. We'll see though. Yeah, I love that threading through, folding it down, bringing it around. I think this is a really great segment to showcase the shoe. In the diversity of the type of shoes, I think it was great. That was freaking sick. I think that's Darren, right? Darren Wong. I took his beginner classes during COVID because they were so fun. This is a great camera shot right here. I love that. Footwork, dancing on the clear, getting a down shot. Super cool. 
Only downside is, of course, getting scratches on the glass, but it, it looked pretty sick nonetheless. I think that was Charles right there. Yeah, so it was just a really great showcase of the shoe. Bleeding it down. That's Tony Tran right there. I saw the behind the scenes on this with the camera. That camera is zooming through and following, which is fun. Yeah. I've taken Tony's class. That's Ben right there in that back corner. That's Mike right there. That's Charles right behind Tony. Love the isolation usage of the framing. What in the world is that angle? But yeah, they use a frame and then he used a hat ISO and then they triggered it with the hands. I love that. Transition it through. Love the pictures to kind of showcase the showed foreshadowing of what's going to go in the frame. It's kind of cool. I love one of them dropping and doing more of a variation of a cartwheel. Not quite a cartwheel, but then the guy on the top doing it. Grabbing it up. The masking was sick. I think that's Ben Nguyen, right? God, it was so cool. Waving it through. Each having their own moment, which I really like. It has a very cypher showcase-esque mentality. Here we go. This was a section where I'm like, I recognize all these guys. Here we go. I'm trying to get it to where it's like really clear to see their faces. Come on. This is nice and, and chill. Okay, so from here, we have in the middle was Bam. That's John Ha. Um, I've taken John Ha's class. I've taken Mike's class. Uh, I think there's Anthony Lee, Ben Chung, and Bam Martin. So it's those five. Ugh, yeah, this is the shot right here. So you got Mike right here. So like, I've, I've been around enough to know. I, I remember seeing them from somebody that I used to know, like that low-key YouTube day with the mustaches. That was my first occurrence of Kendra's to me. So that's Bim, that's Bam, that's John Ha. He just, uh, he did a huge stint in China, I think, for, uh, what was it? It was for, I think, a little like a play or a musical or something like that. Ben's been living in Korea, it feels like. Ben's been doing a bunch of podcasts, and he has hosted the Kinjas podcast. Bam, I don't know what he's been doing, but I'm assuming he's been killing it. <laughs> um, and then you have Mike, of course, been doing the Street Fighter series. We've been seeing him in that. So all of them have been active, so it's really cool to see all of them here. Very cypher as great shots, very tasteful. It's nice to have the cuts, but still in the same venue and location. Super dope. Yeah, boom. Okay, it's like okay, but also showcasing the Kinja Bang. Melting it down. I know this was like in the alternate universe. I loved that. Definitely a lot of people were saying in the comments on this one that uh, it reminded them of the Avengers, like ending scenes. So the only one I don't recognize would be my girl right here. Somebody may know. I do recognize these two. She, uh, Red Bull, we see one. She just won that, I think, like a year or two ago. Then you have Bailey, of course. We've seen her in that first lineup of Kendra, Kendra ladies. But I like the fact that they have her because you can tell by her technique. Like, she's a breaker. She does more of that new school style. Um, like, it was like Tony Tran on, on a polyrhythmic steroid vibe is what it gives. And then I, she, I don't really recognize her. And that's okay because I'm, I know I'll eventually get to know get to know her through these types of activities or, or something of that of the line. But I like the fact that her technical background is very different, but she can hold it down for like what she showcases in, in the moments where they get to showcase themselves. You, She's bringing about a more uh, studio technical background, which I really like. And of course we know Bailey had a technique background in the studio. This right here, that right there. You, they didn't really have shoes that lit up, right? That's how good this this graphic is right here. Yeah. I love it makes me want to Google if they actually had air sessions that had the light up shoes. If they did and they just never released them, I'm going to be real mad. <laughs> those are freaking sick. Like, that's my dream when I was a kid. I had those light up shoes, but they were like that annoying strobe light that somebody could have gotten epilepsy for. But these right here are freaking sick and I would 100% wear these. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna, you know, hold on. Okay, I just went to go Google this because of how, how these shoes look. They look so freaking, it's so real. Just the light up shoes. Like, there's a good chance that they could be real that they're wearing them. Hence why maybe if Nike never said yes, that could be why. Because I'd be, if I was expecting light up Nike air sessions and I was not given that option, I would be, I would be a little sad about it. I'm gonna be real. So it's a level, a sense of false advertising. 
if you if you think about it that way. But I really like like I just love the showcase. I love the showcase of like, her name is Logistics, right? Like that's her that's her battle name. And then people call her Logan, I think, right? I love that. This little house step right here, they build it up. Now you have a group of four showcasing them. Super fun. The energy is really fun. You notice though that they do choose to have. Um, that was a really nice camera angle. Where they they choose to have. Uh, they don't have quite as huge of a groove aesthetic here. But when you think about their wheelhouse of what they're used to showcasing, a lot of times you need to have this a little bit more contained or the, the pocket that you explore is a little different. So having them do a complete 180 switch is something that I'm not 100% expecting. It is really nice to see them do really nice uh, house variants in this aesthetic. And the formation shift was super cool too. Run through. Yeah, this girl, like look, like her movement quality is really nice. It matches with, with, with everybody else, which is super fun. But she definitely has a more studio background. Love that. This was sick. That was so cool. But the light looks really sweet. That right there. Gorgeous. Look at that vibe. You saw her do that reverb vibration right there. That was sick. Gorgeous lines from her. Just the turning is so freaking dope. So dope. She does a, I think she does a Firebird, that girl does. And that was my indicator too, that's Firebird. A lot of times you see it in uh, ballet. Nice, Z sit, using the hips, coming up. Boom, boom, dropping it down, match that track so well. This is a gorgeous sequence. I know they got Kinja's Dojo. If they were to teach anything, this would be a really good one to teach. I love that, doom, doom, doom. Ooh, that sequence right there was sick. Hits it around. I love his choice of fixed points. It's just so tasteful to the track. I've taken a couple of his classes. I took them in person and online. Those are it's just all of them are great. Mmm. Oh, I love that with the traveling of the feet. That just kind of taking their hand and creating this anchor to do it. To do a ticking wave. Super sick. Bleeding it up. Everybody having their own individuality. It's just really nice to see. It's a Kinjas. That's how they finish. So that Nike sign is freaking sick too. I love this. I don't know if it is the actual guy. He places it up. I don't know if that's the guy that is in charge of Nike or if it's somebody that's supposed to give that appearance of him. But I really love the imagery of that. That was really cool. Super dope. Great collab, honestly. It it was it, it is one of the most comfortable shoes I've I've worn to train in. I wear I've worn Pumas, I've worn Under Armour, I've worn Adidas, I've worn multiple different styles of Nikes. I got some I got two different Nike pairs of shoes right down here. <laughs> but I really liked that these were very comfortable and I liked them. And uh the downside though is the sole in the back. So now we're gonna get technical. The sole in the back, so there's actually multiple soles in play. There's a white one, there's like a like a gray or for me it was like white black white because it was a black and white fit but that was starting to come off on the back and it makes it tricky when you dance on carpet like these are freaking great to dance on carpet and it's really hard to say that about tennis shoes but those were great until that back of that sole started to come off and I tried to e6000 it I tried to gorilla glue it but it was hard to find a clamp that would keep that close so it would dry so that was my only downside I love having the hoop in the back low-key it looked like a stylistic bowling shoe I was a fan and a half of that because uh it's it was wide enough in the front to, to have all your feet, like to have your toes not feel so squished. And that's another thing too. So I think this is a great collab. I really wish that they would keep these restocked because I think a lot of dancers could benefit from the shoe type. There was a point in time too when they originally came out with it that I wanted this to be the standard shoe that my kids would wear in class. But because it sold out and they never did a good job of restocking it, I could never really enforce that or like get them to do it because it was great arch support too because um, I had I, I did a huge stint with a with a podiatrist <laughs> which normally at my age you, you shouldn't be having to go to <laughs> as often as I was and this was one of the great shoes that that I could wear during the time of recovering with my ankle so in all this is a freaking great visual my one note is that if they really did not because I googled it and everything so there's not even a sniff 
of light up versions of these shoes. That's freaking great. I love the fact that they showcased it, but a re an example that I'll use is this with, uh, there was a, it's a show, um, it was, you know, the makeup shows Glow Up. When I would watch Glow Up on Netflix, I love that show. Um, and it shows like that because it's just fun to see artistry and just innovation within different fields of the art industry. It's just fun. Um, but one of the challenges with, with MAC Cosmetics, I think, and they had, uh, they had to do a brand shoot and to showcase this eyeshadow. And uh, one of the girls, she blended two of the palettes together and created this gorgeous color. But the reason why she didn't get chosen is because she created a color that MAC did not offer. Because people will be like, oh my gosh, what shade is that? And then they'll be like, oh, you have to combine these two? It's, it's, that's definitely not going to be helpful for your product as much as if offering that exact color. So that would honestly be something on a marketing side with Nike that could have been a topic of discussion as to why this wasn't released. I don't believe it was because they, they showcase it as it wasn't released, um, that they made this for Nike. Uh, but having that blue bar over, uh, down, um, not it actually not glowing could be a huge reason why at least for me if I was sitting there and I was like oh my gosh they, they made it look so good with the light up shoes or maybe they low-key modded them that'd be freaking sick if they modded those shoes um then that would be a really hard product to sell because we don't have that product <laughs> right so for me I would say that first half um I love the choreo of the second half but the first half would be more marketable to actually the public because it's a more true depiction of the shoe. The second half just looks straight concept, looks freaking sick. It looks like, yo, where'd you get those modded air sessions? <laughs> is low key what I want to say. But these are, this was a really great visual. I kind of met my expectations on what I was to expect. Um, and I'm very excited about the discussions on this. I know a ton of you guys who would, who would be finding this video or who, who return on the, on the channel. Um, you guys are fans of Kinja's and so I'm excited to, to discuss with it. It is really nice to see people that I've actually been in the same room with or had conversations with be able to kind of do these types of concepts. It's just fun, you know, and, and the world, the world is not as big as you think it is. And, and that's what makes it fun too, is it kind of feels like colleagues and different who are on different highways, but on the same, but in the same world you know just on a different highway as me uh just just killing it you know and, and and it's really encouraging to see dancers and creators and artists be able to showcase and do things like this you know because that's definitely one of the first of the kind of having a shoe brand like having nike have a dance shoe like it's it's been a long time coming honestly so this has been wonderful Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I was helpful in some way. Um, I think for this one, I focused more on just the overall selling of the shoe, the aesthetic of the shoe, and the dancing that complements it, and the crew itself. It was really fun. And I also was playing a little guessing game of who of who was in this. Um, I didn't quite get to see everybody or take note of who I think everybody was. And I think that's okay. I think it's, it's, it's super fun and enjoyable. And if you want to see more dance content, if you want to see uh, K-pop or dance content like this or battles things of the like i do have that all over youtube as well as patreon i always have early release content like this one was early released on patreon so i'm definitely excited to see you hang out here i hope there's something more for you here uh, outside of this video and i'm jess and i will catch you on the flip side bye